is artificial intelligence being applied to logistics today? My guest is Oliver Hedgepeth. He is a pro professor of logistics at the American Military University Online. Hello, Oliver. How are you? Robert, I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for the invitation to talk about AI. And it is a big deal here, and you are certainly an expert. As founding director of the Army's Artificial Intelligence Center for Logistics, how do you see the role of AI in logistics today? Well, started with that job about 1985 and uh, been working applications of it forever, it seems like. But AI is everywhere today. You don't see it because it's everywhere. We do have it at restaurants. We have it in, in your home. You know, we've got vacuum cleaners. Uh, in the military and in the civilian world, it's rampant. There are, pe people don't realize how much the military is using AI, artificial intelligence, to help soldiers do their job, and robots as well. Mm -hmm. And surgeons are using it, and restaurateurs are using it. Cooks are using it sometimes. So it is everywhere. It's expanding, and it's going to continue to expand. It's here with us. And there are people who don't like it or don't like a robot or don't like smart systems saying, here's what you should do, such as when you type in a Word document on your computer and you misspell a word and mm -hmm. it changes it for you because it knows you misspelled it. That's artificial intelligence. People mm -hmm. don't realize that. So that's, that's it's interesting. Everywhere. Yeah, that's such a wide definition. I think maybe the definition of AI has changed over the years. Back decades ago, when it was first being developed, the idea was to somehow replicate the way that the human brain thought. And we were always like 10 years away from AI becoming a reality. And now all of a sudden it's everywhere, but maybe under a slightly def different definition that it's more like everyday use usefulness now, right? Well, Yes, it is like everyday use. And you're also correct on the definitions change. I've got a nice computer dictionary published in 1967 when I started in the computer world and it defined artificial intelligence. And it seemed to be a pretty good definition, but today it has changed. And I did look up the definition of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. um, a few days ago for a paper I'm writing. And I found six different definitions, but it's like, Really, that's kind of cool hmm. because the definitions depend on who you are. Robert, you have a different view of what AI might mean to you. I have one for me. We're biased in how we do this. There is no one definition of AI. Merriam Webster, the dictionaries do have a definition, but there really isn't just one definition. There's varieties of it, and it changes almost every year now. Yeah, well, I'm interested in what it means to you. So that's sort of the, course of the subject of this conversation today. Now, I know that AI and robotics are not completely synonymous, but where does robotics come into the picture when we're talking about AI? Well, a lot of people don't realize that robotics is everywhere too. And mm -hmm. the military, as I mentioned earlier, it was military and civilian world. The military, for example, has robots that are helping uh, fight battles for them. They're helping shoot the enemy. We have robotic drones that can go out and spot an enemy and shoot them, and send mm -hmm. a missile to them. We have robots in the military field that when a soldier is walking through high grass field with his weapon at night and night goggles trying to look for the enemy, well, guess what? There's a little robot out there with him doing the job for him just a little ahead of him to make sure the man doesn't walk on a mine or the woman soldier doesn't walk on a mine hmm. and the robot does it. Mm -hmm. We have robots that will carry the soldiers' effects. You know, instead of having to load all these 100-pound bags on your back, well, there are robots to help do some of that as well. So robots are everywhere. Yeah. Uh, in the okay, military so, and in the civilian world, too. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the civilian world. Like, what are some of the right. specific uses in, in logistics, specifically, some really exciting and, and yeah. really far-reaching applications of AI in that area right now? Oh, gosh. That, that is a wonderful field. People think of logistics as, well, ordering something from Amazon, okay? Logistics and Amazon are synonymous. Uh, Amazon uses AI and uses robots to pick boxes up that they're going to put in a box and send to you, along with the human that's next to them. They use a lot of robots. They use thousands of robots, and it's part of the logistics system. They use AI to track who you are if you go order something online you're and you pay it by credit card the software is ai based 
It's instantly checking everything and making sure you get what you want. And the delivery schedule comes to you within seconds mm -hmm. where that didn't happen before. That's AI that's doing that. So warehousing is using a lot of it. Uh, you go to a grocery store. They use AI to help track the products that are there in the back, that are on a supply truck coming from some distance far away, or they may be delayed. Now that we are living in a pandemic world, this is 2021, there are six months to 12 months delays on products coming to retail stores, to restaurants, uh, to grocery stores, to clothing stores. And so there's AI that's tracking where the supply chain is because the human is too much going on. There's the supply chain and the logistics systems are really too large for one person to have in their head mm -hmm. and to keep sorted out. You've got too, to sort too much data to, for a too human many being. thousands. There are thousands of supply chains mm -hmm. which have parts that go all the way back to maybe a little copper mine in some foreign country that build digs that copper up that goes and finally makes it into that iPhone you've got. Yeah, you know, and, and some kind of oil ID oil compound that comes from maybe Alaska oil fields or Iranian oil fields, wherever it comes from, or Texas. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all linked together. It's so, it is so complex, but it's everywhere. And it's most exciting to see it happen. Well, it's come, it's come a long way in a very sh relatively short time, but I'm wondering at this point, and of course it's still evolving, what are the limitations of AI today as applied to logistics? Wow. The limitations today, uh, or there's a new kind of limitations happening and it's called, I'd say trust. The National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's a Department of Commerce company. Yep. Okay. You don't think of them as AI a lot. Well, they just published a report in June. They've got an AI group that's looking at how people trust robots, how people trust AI that's helping them do their job, live in their home, you know, vacuum their carpet or something mm -hmm. or order something. Uh, a product, they have studied and started thinking about why you trust a robot or why you trust AI system. And they've defined different aspects of AI. You want to talk about definitions? They've got like 30 different categories of AI definitions. And it's hmm. like really strange uh, to do that, but it's trust. And, it's, and they've been looking at the trust in terms of bias. See, you were biased. And I am biased based on our background. If I build an AI system, if you build an AI system and I build one doing the same thing, they will not be identical because you have a different age, a different background. You come from California. I come from Virginia. That may make me do something with the computer programming code just a little bit different so that when it's trying to solve a problem, because mm -hmm. AI is solving problems, robots are solving problems, it may solve it just a little bit different for someone who's using it. Mm -hmm. And that gets toward the trust factor. You may not trust it if it's giving you an answer that's slightly different than you think it should be. Well, it's the, you don't really want to trust it entirely, do you? I mean, you don't want to distrust an AI system, but isn't there still a role for humans in terms of what they do with the conclusion of an AI system as to how they choose to execute it or not? I tell so you, human I, judgment. Yeah, human judgment is still there, but. I was looking at a program uh, two or three weeks ago on television of uh, these musicians. I can't remember their name. And they were all excited. They had, they put together music and they have all these instruments and they take weeks and weeks and weeks to get a new sound. Mm -hmm. Well, they bought some kind of AI gadget that makes sound and it takes them a matter of seconds to create this brand new sound effect, a new instrument effect that used to take two or three weeks. And they say, AI is going to solve my problem. They trust it 100%. So mm -hmm. there are people who are like, yeah, I'm turning it over to you. You give me the solution, AI machine. You give me the music sound I want to hear. They tell the AI system, here's what I want. And they sit back and they trust it 100%. Now, not everybody does, but there are people who do trust AI 100%. But as we go, as AI evolves from being a descriptive system mm -hmm. to a predictive system and finally to a prescriptive system where it's actually telling you what actions to take, do we want to leave that up to the machine? And if we do want to leave it up to the machine, do we want to know how it arrived at that conclusion? Or are we comfortable with this idea of the black box just 
outputting a conclusion that we should go ahead and implement because we know they're smarter than we are. I, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, and that was part of the uh, report from the National Institute of Standards and Technology published just last June mm -hmm. from their AI task force in which you don't have to worry about that. Um, there was a comment made by some one of the authors about it may be 20 or 30 or 40, 50 years from now before you get to that stage. The AI systems are still, they're strictly prescriptive. They go from here to here. You give them a problem to solve and they solve that problem. Mm -hmm. You know, They may be able to play chess with you and beat the heck out of you, but they can't clean the carpet, okay? Or they can't recommend uh, an ingredient for spaghetti and meatballs. They, might, they can't, you know, they may not be able to do that. They can't do everything. It's not like a human brain in the AI system or even a robot that does something. They are limited. They're, they're very prescriptive, almost like medicine. They're very prescriptive to solve a problem. You got a headache, you take an aspirin. Mm -hmm. You got a problem to solve that's really unique for this robot or this AI system, you turn it on and it gives you a solution. But you as the human have to sit back and say, do I really want to do that? Uh, I'll give you one example. There was a robot that was being used to guide people out of burning buildings. You know, it's dark and it's smoky and people, not firemen, but people are in there and it's smoky and it's like a big building in downtown New York or somewhere would be on fire and you want a robot to guide you through this dark way to get out. The robot was guiding the people into <laughs> closed rooms. You know, it didn't work all the time. 90% hmm. of the time, it got them out the door, you know, it got them oh, that 10%. I don't well, like, yeah, this 10%. is not a situation yeah. where 10% is an acceptable margin no, they're, of error. They're like, <laughs> they got it, and they, they read, the robot read something wrong, yeah. and whatever, or read something differently. Maybe, I won't say wrong, read it differently, and it went into a closet with a bunch of people. Now, here's the key thing. <laughs> Those people who got into the closet, they stayed there thinking, well, the robot's going to fix it now. I'm going to wait here. He's going to tell us to go out and go to the right place for any minute now. We won't go looking. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, the message here is that AI has come a long way. It does great things, but still a role for humans to play as AI, even as AI develops. Uh, Dr. Oliver Hedgepeth, uh, I really appreciate whether the American Military uh, University online. I really appreciate your participation in this interview and your insights into this uh, into this issue. Thank you so much for being with me today. Well, thank you very much for the questions.